Gerd Müller is the most important German footballer, no other. I think he is the greatest striker the world has ever seen. He was simply the best. When I got the ball, I smashed it in. It was 1945 when the great Gerd Müller was born in a small town in Bavaria, Germany. It was, however, a troubled time. The country was in ruins after the Second World War. It was like everywhere in Germany in 1945. Nordlingen had also been partly bombed. It was in a state of emergency, like everywhere. But things gradually improved for the war-torn nation and football was a source of hope for many. There was the miracle of Bern in the 1954 World Cup, which particularly inspired the eight-year-old Gerd Müller. Coming back from two goals down in the final to beat Hungary 3-2, was an amazing achievement, and Fritz Walter's side managed to bring hope back to a beleaguered nation. It seemed that however bad things got, there was always football. I just remember that we always played football straight after school because we didn't have anything in Nordlingen. My parents were poor, but my brother had a good job and he was the one who bought me my first pair of football boots. At nine years old, he was in the school team and then integrated into the youth team at TSV Nordlingen. One of my friends knew already in 1964 that Muller would become a big name in football. He already put his boots and shirt aside in the knowledge that he would become a big star one day. As a young man, Muller chose to be an apprentice welder because the factory was near his training ground. Football, though, was the main focus for his career, and the big clubs started to take an interest in him. But sadly for Gerd, the club he'd supported as a child, Nuremberg, never made an approach. If they had approached me, I would have gone there like a shot. I'd have done anything. I would have cycled all the way there because people in Nordlingen only used to support Nuremberg. We used to go to lots of the games they were playing in 63 in the Bundesliga. And his wish was always to play in Nuremberg. But then, in 64, he went to Bayern. In his first season, Müller helped Bayern gain promotion to the Bundesliga. But not everything went so well. The coach at the time was Chick Kajowski, who was highly critical of Müller's stocky physique. When he arrived, he was small and weighed a lot more kilos than today. Today he is slim. I gave him the nickname Short Fat Muller. Short Fat Muller, he said. What do I want with this guy? What do I want with this short weightlifter? He wasn't convinced. But the Bayern coach gradually began to see Muller's potential. Thank God that for four weeks we were in a training camp in a sports school. We had friendly matches and preparation matches with town teams. I didn't used to start. And then the coach thought perhaps I should give him a chance earlier. And I noticed he had more trust in me. And then he let me play some full games. And then, for the friendly games, I always played. Once Müller began scoring, the old nickname gave way to a new one, Der Bomber. In Germany, people say you bomb into the goal. If you hit it hard, it's like a bomb. 
Der Bomber's ferocious finishing in front of goal was getting him a fearful reputation around the world. After winning the 69 Bundesliga with Bayern, Müller was off to Mexico in the World Cup finals in 1970 with West Germany. The others always say that the greatest World Cup was 74. But for me, the best one was in Mexico. Everything went so well there. Nobody bothered us. And it was great. But it was an unconvincing start for the Germans, who fell behind to an unfancied Moroccan team. That was before Uwe Zela and Müller himself popped up to give the Germans a narrow victory. Coach Helmut Schoen needed to make changes, and fast. Schoen couldn't make his mind up who to play, and everything was undecided at this point. Before the second game, Schoen took a crucifix into his room and prayed. We were wondering, would he ever come out? He sat like that praying, to ask who he should put in the team. And he decided on a formation that was crazy. Schoen decided to play Uwe Zeller out of position, supporting Müller from the flanks. I was perhaps too old back then. I was 35 years old. Helmut Schoen was attacked in the press for even taking me. But he had a good idea. And we worked really well together. I set up a lot of chances for Gerd Müller. Uwe Seller never stopped running. He always had a red head, but his head seemed to become bigger and redder in those days. For his age, he was running like a madman. All of Helmut Schoen's prayers were answered as Müller scored seven times in three group matches, including consecutive hat-tricks against Peru and Bulgaria, taking the Germans through to face old rivals England in the quarter-finals. We wanted to win. This time, we wanted to win. Everyone was talking about revenge, but as a player, you don't think about this, you just think about winning. However, things didn't start well for the Germans. And when we were 2-0 down, because of stupid mistakes in the defence, we thought to ourselves, this is going to get tougher. But Franz Beckenbauer provided a lifeline. That gave us a lot of strength as a team, because we said, this has become easier, we can do this. Then I had a bit of luck with a back header, and then we were back in it. <laughs> All square going into extra time. Cue Der Bomber. A goal is a goal. All that matters is that it crosses the line. West Germany had their revenge for 1966 a 3-2 comeback and the winner scored by Gerd Müller. We played well there. Next up, West Germany took on Italy in the semi-finals. People still talk about this game a lot because it went back and forth with goals and because both teams would have done anything to win. That made it so exciting. It didn't start well for the Germans as Boninsegna gave Italy the lead. In their efforts to get back into the game, Franz Beckenbauer, West Germany's inspiration, dislocated his shoulder. It was a huge blow.
The Italians led by a single goal until the last minute when Karl Heinz Schnellinger scored an equaliser, taking a lap of honour and bringing the game into extra time. An exhausted German team had used all its substitutes, so the injured Beckenbauer, with his shoulder heavily strapped, played on. Then, in trademark style, Gerd Müller poached an unlikely goal from a tired Italian defence. 2-1 to Germany, but the lead was short-lived. A free kick came over and Ziggy held. Supposedly a technically strong player took it on the chest and miscontrolled it. Bergnic latched onto it and scored. Worse was to come, the Italians took a 3-2 lead moments later against the disheartened West German defence. But Gerd Müller hadn't given up hope. He produced a fantastic diving header to level the match 3-3. A minute later, joy turned to anguish when Gianni Rivera scored the winner in what was one of the most memorable World Cup matches in history. Back in Munich, Der Bomber's ruthlessness in front of goal for Bayern was gaining legendary status. There's never been anyone like Gerd Müller. He scored goals, which is the most important thing in football. He scored so many goals that no one will ever catch him. In the season of 1971-72, Gerd Müller scored 40 league goals, a Bundesliga record which has never been equalled. It seemed Bayern Munich and Gerd Müller's success were growing hand in hand, and goals from Der Bomber fired them to the title for three consecutive seasons in 1972, 73 and 74. Internationally, it had gone well too. Müller was a vital part of the 1972 European Championship side, which had reached the final against Russia. We didn't fear the Russians, we beat them in a friendly pretty easily too. Once again it was Gerd Müller who led the way for West Germany, scoring two goals in the final and ending up as the tournament's leading scorer. It was an emphatic 3-0 win and the beginning of an era of dominance on the international scene for West Germany. The crowd let their emotions be known as they spilled onto the Heysel Stadium pitch in Brussels. Gerd Müller picked up his first major international trophy. Back then, the West German team was so good. The Russians were not on the same level as us. That game could have ended 5, 6, 7 or even 8 nil. The World Cup of 1974 would be held in West Germany and this was the only major trophy to have eluded Gerd Müller so far. They made it through two group stages where only Poland stood between them and the final. Almost inevitably, Der Bomber popped up to score the crucial only goal. For Gerd Müller, this day would prove to be one of the most important in his life. 75,000 fans crowded into his home ground, Bayern Munich's Olympic Stadion. Nerves in the West German camp were running high as they knew they were facing the stars of the tournament so far. The thought of Johann Cruyff and Holland's total football made the Germans visibly tense. The 
The start did nothing to calm the nerves. Cloyf was brought down in the box. Johan Neeskin stepped up and the Dutch were in front. The West Germans hadn't touched the ball. The frustration was evident. They battled on, though, and earned a penalty of their own. I wanted to be the world champion. We wanted to be the world champions. I wanted to win a World Cup. I didn't go there just to play. If it was just about taking part, then I couldn't care less. Actually, we thought Gerd Müller was going to take the penalty. But then Paul took the ball and knocked it in. So we were all happy. Breitner had brought West Germany back into the game and it was now the Dutch who were on the back foot. The momentum was now with West Germany. The Dutch defence couldn't cope with Müller's movement and he took his chance. As I came forward, three defenders came with me. I stepped back and they were out of position. So I fired it into the corner, and that was it. 2-1. Muller's goal had won the World Cup for West Germany. The World Cup is the biggest thing you can win. Winning the European Championships is one thing, but the World Cup is something else. But lifting the World Cup was to be Müller's last action in a West German shirt. Due to problems at the Federation, Gerd Müller announced his retirement in a very emotional manner straight after that final. If there had been some sensible people at the Federation, then Müller would have played on. It was a huge loss for the team. At Bayern Munich, though, Müller's career was still going strong. FC Bayern is my first and second home. In one of the most memorable games in the history of the club, Bayern faced Atletico Madrid in a replay of the 1974 European Cup final. Two goals each for Honus and Müller ensured a 4-0 Bayern win. The day after the first match, at training, no one could walk. We were completely exhausted. It's a wonder how we could play again the next day. It was the end of the season and we were already German champions. We were all so tired and then we found the strength to pull ourselves together and win 4-0 in the second game, in what was one of the best games of the season and possibly one of the best in Bayern's history. The following year, Müller and Bayern lined up again in the European Cup final, this time against Leeds United. He continued his scoring in finals, getting the second in a 2-0 win. Müller lifted the European Cup for the second season in succession. And the following year, Bayern made it three wins from three finals when they beat San Etienne. They were establishing a European dynasty. I believe that the foundations of Bayern were planted in the 70s, after Bayern won the European Cup three times in a row. 74, 75 and 76. There is no question that it was the most successful time for Bayern on the international stage. These seasons of European glory were undoubtedly the finest at Bayern. And for many of his 15 years at Munich, he was the most feared striker in the Bundesliga. But eventually, in 1979, 
time caught up with Der Bomber. He had a bit of bad luck with a coach at Bayern Munich who suddenly didn't want him anymore. He was getting older and not dealing with it well, not keeping up. Football had changed. Unwanted by Bayern, Müller took the decision to make a new life with his wife in the USA, where he joined the NASL team Fort Lauderdale Strikers. For the first five matches, I didn't score at all. Then they said that the people wanted to see someone who could score. And when the fifth game came at Edmonton, I scored four times, and then it started. Goal after goal. Muller was not the only star at Fort Lauderdale. The NASL often proved to be a battle of egos. It was the first training session, and at kickoff, George Best toe poked the ball very hard at his knee, so that the ball flew five metres away. Gerd was really upset about it. So afterwards, I went over to George Best to do an interview. I said, what happened? Are you jealous of Gerd Müller? And you know what he said? Why should I be jealous about him? I'm a better player than he is. It seemed to me that he feared me as the other star. He never passed the ball to me. Best soon left the strikers, which left Müller to help himself to the goals. Back home, though, many questioned why he'd ever moved to the States. I believe it would have been better if he had ended his career at Bayern Munich. But there were differences in opinion at the time. It was not a good time for sport when he left the club. I don't think it was a good idea to go there. Muller was lost in America. He went with his wife and he couldn't speak English. He was all about scoring goals and playing football. And when the community wasn't surrounding him, I imagine that's where everything started to go wrong. Alienated from Bayern, the club he'd served for so long, Muller became disillusioned with the game. He took comfort in alcohol. We met him at his toughest time. It was in the old Munich airport. And you did not need to be a great philosopher to know that he had big problems. Uli Hoeneß, Franz Beckenbauer and I discussed the subject briefly and we decided to bring him into the office the next day. When he came and admitted his problem and said he needed help, then we helped. We did everything that we could, from rehab to giving him the job of coaching the youth team, and then the amateur team, and now he's been a coach for 20 years. He is socially connected and secured by FC Bayern, and once again, he is a wonderful person. So thanks to the help from a few old friends at Bayern, the great Gerd Müller will be remembered by all in his life for what he did best, scoring goals. Nordlingen is very proud of Gerd Müller, and that was why we named our stadium after him. The best description was from Franz Beckenbauer, who said that without Gerd Müller, there would never have been this Bayern Munich. Without Gerd Müller, I wouldn't be sitting here. We wouldn't have the Bayern Munich we have today. Without Gerd Müller, Germany would never have become world or European champions. It's a shame. Gerd Müller should be mentioned in the same breath as Maradona, Cruyff, Ronaldinho and Pelé. There's no one like Gerd Müller.